वेलकम टू अ न्यू वीडियो दिस वीडियो इज अ लिटिल डिफरेंट बिकॉज हियर आई विल टॉक अबाउट हाउ टू रीड द नाइक्विस्ट प्लॉट दैट इज ऑप्टेन्ड इन द इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल इंपिडेंस स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी ई आई एस इज अ टेक्निक दैट इज यूज ऑन लार्ज स्केल बट इट इज अ बिट डिफिकल्ट और ट्रिकी टू नो एक्सैक्टली वॉट हाउ टू मेक सेंस ऑफ द नाइक्विस्ट प्लॉट सो नाइक्विस्ट प्लॉट इज द प्लॉट बिटवीन इमेजनरी नेगेटिव ऑफ द इमेजनरी values of imaginary impedance values and versus real impedance values i have talked a bit about in detail about this in the telegram video playlist please go through that for the basics of eis as well also consider joining the telegram group for further videos in these kind of eis uh, Nyqu uh, nyquist plots the theory states that you can either have a straight line or you can have a semicircle perfect semicircle or you can have say two semicircles or you can have a semicircle and an angle however these are not seen in the actual conditions in the actual conditions you will usually not see a straight line you will most probably see a slant line or an arc you will also not see a perfect semicircle you will probably see a depressed semicircle which looks something like this if there are two or more depressed semicircles you may have something like this and then an arc so sometimes the semicircle may not even be complete within the range of frequency that you use to measure the eis the line that is shown over here for 45 degrees is for the warburg's impedance it should be at 45 degrees exactly but it may not seem like that so sometimes you have a semicircle and then you have this kind of an line which may arc at the end so it is tricky to know if this is warburg's impedance or is it the second semicircle which is not been completed for this we have to consider if there are any diffusing species in the electrolyte or uh, diffusing species as in diffusing gases or if uh, there is a component that will contribute to the semicircle so because such nyquist plots are obtained in practical uh, it is the usual method is to go for the circuits which will fit them so that would that is usually the first step that is done so you the circuits are electrical circuits and they consists of resistance and capacitance these may be in serial and parallel arrangements and the most common is the randall circuit so randall circuit is a resistance and then a parallel arrangement of capacitance and resistance further down uh, there may be two or more of these parallel arrangements which is uh, such as in the first case or there may be this parallel arrangement within the resistance so you have this inset parallel ar arrangement which is given over here sometimes they this may not be there and you may only have the warburg's impedance so if you have uh, if you are if you are sure that the second a uh, line is a straight line and it is exactly at 45 degrees then you may want to consider going for this circuit so when you have one rc parallel arrangement that will contribute to one semicircle this resistance is for the solution resistance and it is equal to the absolute value at this point so if your solution resistance is high or low your circ uh, plot may shift to the right or to the left of course this is a uh, uh, usually we will have low resistive low resistance and high conductivity solution so this resistance is not usually a problem if you have two rc circuits you will have two semicircles so these may appear as two semicircles depressed semicircles of course uh, or they may also appear as semicircle and an and an arc 
the second rc circuit will also show these same conditions so it really depends on what your system is to decide whether you want to go for this one or this one mathematically the software will not uh, make any uh, difference between these two calculations they will be exactly the same so you will get the same values for both but it is not only the circuit that we want to fit if you go through the soft any software you will see that the more number of circuits you add the better is your fit but it the fitting is not the only factor you also have to consider the physical meaning of each circuit for example when you uh, have a certain system you should actually begin from this system to and then go to the circuit that you need to solve so if you have a simple steel part then the first uh, portion will be for resistor so your resistance will be for solution resistance that is the first one then that uh, because you do not have any film or any inhibitor over here it directly the it will encounter the surface of the metal so here you have the double layer capacitance which is this and the charge transfer resistance which is the resistance of the metal for Uh, metal against dissolution so basically your charge transfer resistance will determine how good your uh, metal will prevail in that particular electrolytic medium now for example instead of this uh, you have put inhibitor in it this inhibitor will form a certain film at the top now please remember this film is not permanent it's going to be temporary so initially when you have no inhibitor you ha can say that this is the circuit now you have the inhibitor so from the solution it will not encounter the metal directly it will first encounter this inhibitor film so this inhibitor film will have its own tra charge transfer uh, it, it, it it will have its own capacitance and resistance and then it will have the capacitance and resistance for the metal so in this case you may uh, want to consider a uh, uh, two parallel resistance uh, two parallel arrangements so you will have a resistance then you have a parallel ar arrangement and you have an another you have another parallel arrangement so in this case the typical uh, plots that you get would be two semicircles or two arcs if Uh, if your inhibitor film is very good then in that case you may not see the second arc you may only see a single arc because there the uh, metal is not going to play any part in corrosion as the inhibitor is completely protecting it from the surface from the um, uh, corrosive medium so we can eliminate the second uh, parallel arrangement and only consider one Uh, rc circuit so in that case you may only see a single uh, semicircle uh, as uh, the time goes and the inhibitor starts degrading you may again see the development of the second semicircle so the second semicircle in this case indicates that now the inhibitor film is not good enough and the metal has started contributing to the corrosive action so there is uh, so the third a uh, second semicircle will a uh, second circuit will now come into play so depending on the actual physical conditions you have to decide which circuit is right for you and then go with the uh, with the uh, fitting after that if you consider the coating case in the coating conditions usually in the in initial stages you do not see two semicircles at all you'll only see a single arc or a straight line indicating that the coating is really good so uh, the solution resistance is followed by a single parallel arrangement and anything over here indicates the pres uh, the uh, high impedance for the coating so if you have a straight line usually you do not even have this resistance you'll only have a resistance and a capacitance that will give you uh, the fitting for this arc as the coating starts degrading it will start developing pores 
when it starts developing pores then you will have the arc formation so arc formation indicates that now you have the resistance coming into play parallelly and you can change the circuit used for fitting in the case so it is not compulsory to keep using the same circuit for all the conditions in your study if you see that physically there is a change in your system you do definitely need to change the circuit and get the right parameters and fitting further if you see that the coating has now completely degraded and the metal has now come in contact with the electrolyte in this case now you will have our resistance for electrolyte a parallel uh, capacitance a resistance and in this resistance you will have a second inset parallel circuit so this inset parallel circuit indicates that the electrolyte has reached gone through these pores and reach the surface of the substrate and begin the corrosion of the substrate thus whenever you want to match the circuits with the nyquist plots the first step is to see your physical system unless you go to actual physical system and hypothetically say what the changes might be you may not get the correct circuit and, and you may not even get the right interpretation so that's about how to read nyquist plots thank you and uh, do go to my website for online courses on basics of corrosion